Are you wondering where your blood sugar levels should be? We know with diabetes, we don't want the sugars to be too high, called hyperglycemia, and we don't want them too low, called hypoglycemia. We want them right in the middle. Well, what exactly is right in the middle, and what should your blood sugar levels actually be so we can prevent complications of diabetes? Of course, we all want to live as healthy as we can, and we want to take care of our organs internally such as our heart, our kidneys, our feet, circulation, brain, all of the above. We do that by keeping our blood sugars very tightly controlled. However, not a lot of people actually know what their blood sugar levels be, and it can be quite confusing to understand. On today's video, I am going to tell you what the American Diabetes Association recommends that blood sugar levels should be for a diabetic. Before we do that, this is your host, Diana Bitucci. I'm an APRN here in the United States, I manage diabetes every single day and my passion is to educate and teach all of you worldwide so we can beat diabetes together. Please consider subscribing to my channel, share this video with family and friends that you think can benefit and learn from it. We know the blood sugar, also known as blood glucose, refers to the concentration of glucose, which is a type of sugar present in the blood. Glucose is a crucial source of energy for the body cells and the levels are typically regulated to ensure that we function very properly. We have something called insulin, which is produced by the pancreas, that really helps in aiding us keep our blood sugar levels within target range. If the blood sugar levels are going too high, maybe after having a chocolate bar, which I don't recommend, we know the pancreas kicks in and produces more insulin so that our blood sugar levels can go to a more normal value. And if our blood sugar levels are going too low, well, hopefully our pancreas is not releasing insulin because they are gonna unfortunately go even lower and we can develop something called hypoglycemia, which typically does not happen in a non-diabetic. Normally we develop hypoglycemia in people who are taking medications like insulin or other sulfonylureas like a glimepiride or glipizide. Every person's blood sugar levels will vary. There are many different things that affect our glucose levels. Of course, food is a big part of that, but things like stress, lack of sleep, dehydration, pain, any of those can actually cause our blood sugar levels to vary. So my blood sugars today will not be the same as tomorrow because maybe tonight I'm not gonna get a great night's sleep and therefore my blood sugar levels will be different tomorrow even if I'm doing the exact same thing. But I'm gonna share that, that in a different video so make sure you guys are tuning in. Today we're strictly gonna stick to blood sugar values. We know that there's really no magic number for blood sugar levels generally speaking. However, many people strive to achieve a blood sugar level of less than 140 milligrams per deciliter. We have different targets for everyone. What I do with one patient is not the same thing I do with another patient, even though they can be exactly in the same age and the same gender. Because there's different things that I'm looking for, of course. We want to make sure that the patient doesn't have other risk factors, vision problems, all of those things can cause issues. Don't panic if you have different values given to you by your healthcare professional because they are thinking about you as a whole and as, as an individual and therefore they want to make sure that they're choosing the right values for you. Maybe striving for a glucose of 140 milligrams per deciliter can really put you at high risk for a low blood sugar which of course can be extremely dangerous. The American Diabetes Association has put out a few guidelines that they want us to follow for the appropriate patient. If you are an adult with type 1 or type 2 diabetes, your before meals or fasting glucose should be between 80 milligrams per deciliter to 130 milligrams per deciliter. That equates to 4.4 millimoles per liter and 7.2 millimoles per liter. Your glucose level one to two hours after a meal should be less than 180 milligrams per deciliter, which is 10 millimoles per liter. If you are over the age of 65, your fasting is recommended to be between 80 and 180 milligrams per deciliter, which is 4.4 millimoles per liter and millimoles per liter. We can actually change these parameters based on the health of the individual. Sometimes I may want blood sugar levels to be higher than that. There's a lot of patients that I do not want their blood sugars to be anywhere below 100 because of the fear of low blood sugar. This is generally speaking, and it's considering the patient's health to be fairly well. So if you don't have diabetes, your fasting glucose should be less than 99 milligrams per deciliter, 
which is 5.5 millimoles per liter. One to two hours for someone without diabetes should have a glucose level of less than 140 milligrams per deciliter, which is 7.8 millimoles per liter. So I hope you guys enjoyed and learned from the video. Please remember that not all of these values will apply to everyone. There's different parameters for pregnant women. There's different parameters for adolescent and children. And of course, we always have to consider the general health of the patient before we make any of these decisions. Please comment below. Let me know your thoughts. I'll see you all on the next video.